Hello guys, once again it's Matt and today we have another video. Let's thank our members first, Overlanding 11 b and Cots. Thank you for being the full crew members, all the Foxbat members, uh, especially Kyle Cesar for being the new Foxbat Fox member, uh, and all the Fishbat members as well. Thank you guys for, for helping out, it helps a lot. And I wanted to say thank you for helping me getting to 5,000 subscribers. We did it boys, we actually did it. It's so amazing. I have no words to describe it because I don't think it's even been a month since I got 4k so now we are already at 5k so yeah I have kind of a personal goal of a nine at least 9,000 at least it's kind of a yeah weird uh, way to say it but I have kind of a goal to um, to get 9k on uh, on the on the end of the year uh, so yeah, but thank you guys. Thank you a lot. It helps a lot uh, helping me make this actually a permanent job, you know, so yeah uh, We already um, Organize it here and I changed it a little bit of the tier list. Obviously we are doing a tier list video today uh, And I changed it a, a bit because it was not that good uh, before I don't want to open more stuff here because I know a lot of people think that these five uh, tiers are just too little to actually compare each aircraft you know uh, but I don't want it to see like a, a hold the whole screen covered with tears you know uh, so yeah maybe in those more uh, the bigger ones that I do but yeah today we are going to uh, elaborate on the best tier 6 premium aircraft that we see in War Thunder uh, basically this is kind of a buy guide you know uh, so basically if you are having doubts on buying one of these aircraft I will help you a little bit hopefully uh, so we have the power creepers obviously they are the, the most powerful aircraft in their tiers obviously I'm comparing because for, for, for example the F5C is a 10.3 aircraft but the A4E is an 8.7 if I'm not mistaken so yeah it, it's different you know so I will compare them with their tier obviously an F5C will be better than an A4E right but as a premium with their own BR, I'm going to compare them e to each other, you know, uh, to see what's the best aircraft out there for you to buy. Okay, so we have the Power Creepers will be the, the basically the OP aircraft, uh, the great aircraft, obviously very good aircraft, but they don't they're not like OP. They're just very good. Uh, not great, not terrible, obviously. Uh, Comrade Diatlov here always as always. Um, uh, aircraft that are mid, you know, they're not that, ma that amazing, but they're not bad as well. Not good aircraft that have a certain problem that they have to face or something like that. And the trash being an aircraft that I would never buy or aircraft that I really don't like, you know. I flew every aircraft that we have here. And basically, I have my opinions on it, obviously. So this is these are my opinions, okay? So just remember that. I'm going to just exchange the uh, the German one over here to make kind of a sense here. Maybe the UK can be after this and China, Italy. Yeah, everything else is is all right, right? Kind of uh, organize it. So let's start with the US. Obviously, we got the newest premium aircraft on the um, on the US uh, of A. You know. Uh, an aircraft that he, he has its problems, obviously, and I don't think it's a power creep, even though it has M9Ls. I think it's a great aircraft for you to, to buy if you don't have anything in the US. I don't think it's an amazing aircraft, to be honest. The performance of it is kind of lacking, uh, in my opinion. I really don't like that flying that slow, you know, and it's such a big target that you can die a lot uh, by uh, many things. But in general, it is an aircraft that you can get a lot of points with it. It's an aircraft that has a lot of ammo and a lot of missiles, a lot of bombs, a lot of rockets, a lot of everything. And it has M9Ls to protect itself. Uh, if you ever flown any 8.7, you will know how dangerous this aircraft actually is against you. I'm currently researching and uh, just... Um, you know, uh, spading the CL-13 Mark V that I never got to spade, and yeah, it's a it's a, a scary aircraft to fly uh, against. You know, to fly against uh, because it's an aircraft just because of the missiles. You know, and the head-on passes with the cannon. It's 
dangerous. And he has a 9.7 BR instead of the 10.0 of the late variant. So yeah, it's one of the best ones, and especially in the US. But I think it's not that it's not a power creep, you know. It's just an aircraft that <clears throat> it's supposed to do one job, which is cast, you know. And for fighters, is not that good, but still. Uh, the next one, the F5C. I think, uh, especially before, right now, I think it's it would be a kind of a mix between it. I'm going to put in the power creepers because I know a lot of people like this aircraft, but still, it's an aircraft that used to be very much a power creep. Right now, I don't think it is that much because uh, we are getting more and more advanced aircraft uh, close to these BR, so at 10.3. Uh, but it's just the, the flight model is amazing. I mean, this aircraft was scary even for a MiG-23 back in the day, uh, which is a top-tier aircraft. So it was an aircraft that, uh, because of its flight performance, uh, it is very easy to fly, you know. Uh, it's very, very easy to get into jets with it, uh, because it is fairly fast, you know. Uh, it turns amazingly it has a very good uh, like a very strong damage model like kind of weird to be honest and kind of op um, it doesn't have the most amount of flares or it doesn't have the best missiles and it only has two of them but normally you will get kills with the cannons and in a dogfight and with the massive furballs that we have in war thunder especially in a 10.3 aircraft that can face nine a lot of 9.7s a lot of 10.0s 10.0s a lot of 9.3s even, um, you will have a lot of fun with this aircraft. It is a very easy aircraft, very fun and kind of OP to be honest. Um, so yeah, the next one is the AV-8A, the first American Harrier. So I'm going to put it on not great, not terrible. I think it's a very good aircraft uh, back in the day. Right now it's just alright, it's not the best thing ever, to be honest, uh, I think, yeah, they, the missiles are not the greatest, but they are very useful, um, because they have a lot of range, obviously, the AIM-9G, uh, they have been nerfed right now, the cannons are not the greatest thing ever as well, I really dislike the Aidens, uh, but the performance, I mean, in turns, it's not that great, normally, but if you use the, the thrust vectoring, and a little bit of flaps and stuff like that, you can actually outturn a lot of aircraft. And with its BR, you can face a lot of aircraft that are just, I mean, they don't have flares or anything like that, and they don't turn very well, or if they do, you, they don't have a lot of speed. Uh, this aircraft is not a particularly fast aircraft, but the, the acceleration of the Pegasus engine uh, that the Pegasus engines provides to the aircraft is just amazing. So yeah, uh, I would say that it's not a bad aircraft, but it's not as good as the other ones as well. I think it's alright to fly it. I kind of dislike the way that if the, the flight model is. Uh, not because of Gaijin, but because of the aircraft itself, you know. I just think that the, um, the GR7, for example, is such an improvement that made me kind of consider this aircraft as not a very... Um, I know they are very different aircraft, but you know how, like, uh, it changed for me, my opinion on this aircraft, you know, a little bit. So yeah, this is for the USA. Obviously, if you want to buy one of these, I would suggest the F5C for the USA. But yeah, for Germany, we only have one. Uh, and it is the MiG-21 SPSK, which is the MiG-21 PFM uh, for the German, the East German Air Force. So I'm going to put it in the power creeps. I mean, it's a 9.7, uh, 10.0 aircraft with R60s. So yeah, it's... It's very, very good. Uh, it has a very good uh, radar for the BR, you know. The performance, obviously, uh, only has the R11 engine, which is not the most powerful engine ever. Uh, so you will have to be careful when you face stuff like a Mirage 3. Uh, even an F5C can be very dangerous to this aircraft, uh, just because it turns very well, but the energy, does, uh, the, the, the energy and retention in turn is not the greatest because of the engine. So, yeah, but still, you have R60s, it's kind of, you know, two, uh, two kills confirmed, if you use it correctly. One of the best missiles, especially in this BR, you know, it's the missile that the MLD gets. So, yeah, it's a, an amazing aircraft, I love it. Uh, I mean, it's just a, a really, really amazing aircraft, I love this one. It's probably my favorite in the way that it flies in, in the R60s and stuff, it's very easy to fly. Uh, the cannon is very good, and... I know a lot of people don't like the cannon, but I think it's very, very good. 
Uh, and it's one of the best premiums in the game, I think. One of the best. Uh, so yeah, let's get to the Soviet Union. First of all, we have the Su-7 BMK. So, all right, I would like to say that it's not that good, but because of its BR, it's not great, not terrible. I mean, the point of a premium is to get a lot of points, you know, and with that, you need to fly it um, and get a lot of kills, a lot of stuff. This aircraft, you won't be able to get that many kills. It's 9.7, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so, but you don't have any missiles, you don't have anything like that. You are kind of slow, you don't have a radar, uh, slow in the sense of... Um, I mean, it's not slow, it's fast, but because you're normally using bombs with it, it kind of becomes a, a slow aircraft. And yeah, it is a very, very good aircraft as a premium, I think, you know, because you can bomb a lot of things and stuff like that. But it would not be my choice um, to get for the USSR. Um, I didn't, uh, just for you to know, I didn't put the other ones that are hidden. Uh, for example, the AK-38, um, it's hidden now, you cannot buy it anymore. As you see right, uh, let's show to you guys. So <clears throat> uh, it's not you cannot buy it the Act 38 anymore, as you see. So I will not put it uh, right here just because of that. You know, I'm going to put aircraft that you can actually buy right now, right now. You know, and I just realized the Su-7 BMK is a 9.3. So yeah, as a 9.3 aircraft, I think it's a very good one. Um, I mean, it's a 9.3, right? I thought it was a, a 9.7. I really thought... So, yeah, because of that, I will just maintain it here. But the thing is, it's an aircraft that will bomb, and because of that, you will get a lot of points. But it's not something amazing, right? It's just that. Simple as that. Uh, the next one, the MiG-21S, I think it will be in the Power Creepers as well. It's a 9.7 MiG-21. Basically, a MiG-21 MF. The only main difference between the S and the MF is that the internal cannon on this version, obviously, because initially the MiG-21S uh, received the R-11 engine, but later it was upgraded apparently for the R-13, which is the engine on the MF. So and on the SMT, to be honest, but it is the version uh, more closely to the MF. So yeah, the only difference between this and the MF is basically the gun pod being, I mean, out of the aircraft, you know. Uh, so that makes you have a little bit less energy technically, you know, not something like it's completely different, but still the radar is the same. Uh, you don't have countermeasures, uh, but you do have um, a decent radar and you can take four missiles, uh, especially the R3Rs. They're pretty all right to use in head-ons and stuff like that, uh, but you can use also the R3Ss. And yeah, it's a very good aircraft because of its performance. It's the same as the F-5C. It doesn't have the, the best missiles ever, you know. I still think that even if this gets uh, a 10.0 aircraft, I still think... I mean, not really, right? But I still, I still think that this aircraft deserves the R-55 that he used in real life, which is a late 60s missiles comp uh, missile compared to the M9D, you know, kind of situation. Which is, I mean, it's not the best missile ever, but it would be better than the R3S as an IR missile. Uh, so I still think that they should get it because they use this missile in this aircraft. So, and many, many other ones as well. Uh, but still, it's an aircraft that, because of its performance, the engine, I mean, the performance of this, uh, it just makes it uh, way better than the SPS in the performance. Uh, but obviously, I put the SPS here because of the R60s as well. A very, very good aircraft. Amazing aircraft. I have both of them and ah, it's my two favorite premiums. Uh, obviously, Su-25K, I have to put it in the Power Creepers. I mean, R60Ms, 9.7. The cannon is amazing. The GSH is 30-2. It's, uh, it's such a good cannon in head-ons. Uh, you can do a lot of ground striking with this. You can do a lot of different things with it. You can... I mean, I would not advise you guys to be a fighter with this, but uh, compared to the MiG-21S, I would probably say to buy the Su-25K, uh, just because it has R60Ms, man, and the cannon. Uh, so that you can actually, the normal way that I use this aircraft is just, I mean, it's basically the same as the Tech-3 one. I would normally use it as a, as a, Jesus, voice crack, but I would use as a, a ground striker or a bomber, but... Uh, you know, it can defend it itself. That's the thing, you know. I think it's a very, very good aircraft. 
And yeah, it's just amazing, amazing. You can take a punch. I mean, this aircraft takes hits, 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 and it doesn't go down. It's a very tough aircraft to, to, to take down. So it, it is a very, very good aircraft. Uh, if you are planning to get to jets, you know, like um, in a very good way, if you got, uh, want to get used to jets and stuff like that, I would say that the MiG-21 is the best of the three of the Soviet Union. Uh, but the Su-25 is just a easier aircraft to fly. It's just that the MiG-21, uh, it would be better for you to get used to the way that the Soviet fighter jets are. You know, it's a very good platform to learn that. Um, next one, the British. So yeah, the British they have two ones. They have the G, uh, the Harrier GR1, obviously. I'm going to put it on not great, not terrible as well, because it's an aircraft that uh, yeah, it has a better missile, but not really. Uh, and the performance is basically the same as the AV-8A. So uh, everything else that I said about the AV-8A um, is the same about the GR1. The performance is very good, but the acceleration is good, the max speed is not. It turns kind of well if you use the thrust vectoring, but normally it's, it's kind of a brick. Um, I mean, you can do VTOL. And yeah, basically the main difference is the missiles, you know. And the missiles are the SRAMs, the missiles that we see in the F-6 Hunter. Uh, it's an aircraft that, um, I mean, a missile that, it's very good at short ranges, but it tends to be weird sometimes. And it, as I said, it doesn't have a lot of range. So it's not that great. I think it's very good, but the aircraft is is all right. The missiles here is great. They are great in certain situations, but I uh, mean, my friends called it um, the F6 and these as the force field, you know, uh, because if you get into that force field, you will get a missile, and it's really hard to evade, uh, especially in some BRs. But I don't know. It's just an easy aircraft to to destroy, you know, and yeah, it's not a very very good aircraft. Then we have the Lightning F uh, 53. I think it's, uh, I would say that it's not good because it has a very steep learning curve for some people, I think. Um, the cannons are not the greatest. The speed is amazing, but the turning is not that good. Um, it's a very good aircraft for its BR, but it faces a lot of more modern missiles and stuff like that. Now it's in 9.3, 9 that it's a bit better than it was in 9.7. Uh, so it can be, the, the thing is, it can be very OP, but it cannot at the same time. Uh, and it's just basically the same aircraft that we see in the Tech 3. So, I don't know, it's not an aircraft that I'm a big fan of. It has a very steep learning curve, I think. Uh, so it's not a trash bin, it's just an aircraft that it's overlooked. And not a lot of people mind this aircraft too much. Not a, a hard aircraft to actually shoot down. So, yeah. It's all right, but I don't know. Uh, then the Chinese, we have the A5C. I have to put it. I mean, to be honest, I would like to put it here compared to these ones. Uh, but I know a lot of people will uh, just be mad at that. I mean, yeah, let's just keep it in great uh, because of two reasons. Um, first of them is the speed and the performance. You know, uh, it is a MiG-19, but a little bit slower. A little bit weirder you know uh, so yeah it's it's an attack aircraft so it's not supposed to be like a fighter jet uh, technically you know but it has the magics you know uh, the magics I mean if he didn't have the magics I would have put it in not great not terrible depending on the BR but with the magics at that BR with flares and chef it is a very dangerous aircraft the magics are a very good missile very very good missile and yeah the cannons are just kind of useless they're very I mean I know, I know a lot of people learn how to use it but it is a bad cannon it's a difficult cannon to learn low vo muzzle velocity low damage so not the greatest thing ever uh, but it's just the performance is very good it climbs well and stuff like that but it doesn't turn very well depending on the situation and yeah it has just a few flares and stuff like that it's it's not something like it's not bluntly OP you know but it's not bad as well, it's a very good aircraft. So yeah, China has a very, very good one, I think. Uh, continuing, uh, we have the Ariete. I think for me, it's not great, not terrible. It's an aircraft that, I mean, it doesn't have anything. You know, it's a very, uh, it's a lower BR. It's, I think it's a 9.3 aircraft, right? So I mean, it's the same BR as the Lightning F F-53, so it's, <laughs> it's complicated. Uh, you can win basically against anything in a dogfight. But beyond that, it's an aircraft that 
doesn't have much to offer you know uh, you have the two engines there and stuff like that so it, it is different but I don't know uh, it does have the 30 millimeters which are nice and the dogfight capabilities are good and it's light and nimble and stuff like that but I just think it's a uh, too late uh, design you know it's it's a design from the mid 50s if I'm not mistaken or something like that and it just doesn't compete very much on many occasions the enemy will always choose uh, the uh, when it's going to attack you so that becomes a problem you know then we have the Milan so yeah the Milan I know a lot of people like this aircraft but I'm going to put it on the trash bin it's just it's a, like a, a Mirage 5 but 5F you know but worse in some areas it doesn't have magics I mean the bomb load it's all right I guess the mustache is all right I guess for landing and takeoff but not nothing else it lo loses a lot of energy and it loses a lot of dog fights because of the the energy you know the rate fight on this aircraft is just really bad so I don't know it's just underpowered uh, the cannons are the death us that I really don't like and I know in the right hand it can be a very good aircraft but uh, it's not an aircraft that I am particularly uh, a very big fan of. You know, it's an aircraft that I think. I mean, there there is other options to be a premium, and this one is just a weird one that I really don't care. You know, so yeah, I, I fly it, I flew it, and it's just I, it's not my cup of tea. You know, but yeah, uh, the J thirty five. I think. I mean, I wish I could put it here. But I don't know, it's complicated. I mean, I'm going to put it on great just because it doesn't have any good missiles or countermeasures. In, in its BR, it's alright to not have it. But sometimes you face stuff like an R60M or something like that that you need some form of defense. Uh, if you are an aircraft like this, you can always outrun them. You know, you don't have, I mean, the SPS can take flares, but. Uh, for example, the S, uh, especially, you don't have the, the flares in chef and you can outrun or just choose to not attack because you have the speedy capabilities. These aircraft, you can you can do that as well. Uh, so, yeah, it's alright for that. But the thing is, it doesn't have any missiles or anything like that. I mean, if I'm putting the MiG-21, I mean, I'm going to put it right here. It doesn't matter to me. If you compare to the MiG-21S, uh, it's going to be... I don't think, I don't know about the acceleration and the max speed, but obviously in turning it destroys the MiG-21, and it basically has the same missiles. It doesn't have the radar missiles, but still. So yeah, I guess it's it's a power creeper, you know. It's a very, it's an aircraft. If you get this aircraft, you cannot win a dogfight if you are even flying a Vegan or a Mirage 2000 or an F-14 or an MLD. This aircraft will win, you know, if you are not smart and like play it very smartly. In a dogfight, this aircraft is just completely impossible to win against, you know. It's a really good aircraft. And probably one of the best premiums. And then we have the F4E. I think for the BR that is in, I mean, it's not great, not terrible, it's nothing too much. Uh, as you see here, let me check the, the, the weaponry that he has, just for me to remember. Yeah, it doesn't have the Shafir 2, you know. So... It's an aircraft that it's not like I'm super amazing and stuff like that. In a dogfight, you know, it, it's an aircraft that loses a lot of, um, of energy in turning. And it can be problematic sometimes. But it's still a very good attacker. And he has its capabilities of using uh, some types of weapons that he can be very effective in a ground battle. So it's a, it's a good aircraft, but it's not amazing, you know. I still think that... Uh, the other ones are better, um, like these ones, but I think probably Israel is going to get another premium aircraft soon, I would say. Uh, there are some countries that are e are not even here, like Japan, I mean, come on, where is the, the Japanese uh, tier 6 premium, right? Uh, where is the AMX? The Brazilian AMX, for example, could be a very good premium for Italy. So there are nations that need, uh, not that they're needed, but uh, they could be used with better premiums you know uh, I think uh, especially France Italy and Israel and of course Japan as well um, the other ones are just alright you know 
so yeah, but basically this is it guys. These are my tier list for the premiums. Uh, obviously, these are the best ones. I think you can buy them any one, any one of these ones and it's just amazing. Uh, I think um, you always have to consider the country first before the aircraft. Uh, so, um, for example, if you don't have anything for the Soviet Union, sure, consider buying one of these. But if you already are in like tier 6 or tier 5 even, it's not really worth it. Because in the tech tree you will have better versions of the aircraft and, and stuff like that. So yeah, uh, there is a tiny bit of a wiggle room here. For example, the SPS is something that the, the Germany doesn't have it. Especially in this BR, I mean it's almost the same BR as the MiG-19 and it has R60s. So it's something completely different. But for example, the F5C, you have it on the tech tree. The A10, you have uh, the F5, you have in the tech tree. A10, you have in the tech tree. The A5, technically, you have in the tech tree. These MiGs, uh, Su-25, J35, uh, the AV8s, the Su-7, Harrier, the AD-80, the A4s, the Lightning, and even the Milan. All of these, you have a version on the tech tree that are normally better, better you know, than these versions. So just consider that, you know, uh, there are some aircraft that are better and depends on the BR, but if you are just trying to buy an aircraft that is unique and stuff like that, you just have better versions on the tech tree or get an event vehicle maybe. There are some very cool event vehicles. So yeah, but basically this is it guys. Make sure to subscribe and thank you again for the 5,000 subscribers and I see you guys on the next one. So bye guys. See you.